So, um, Pastor Kevin's been teaching on uh, going back to go forward. How many of you have been here for some of that series? Such good stuff. I and mean, going back to things in the Old Testament that we need to address, that we need to remember, that we need to lay hold of those promises and those truths and those patterns that we see established for us to be able to move forward in our life. It's been some good stuff. And I tell you, as he had asked me uh, to teach this Sunday, and okay, um, he had asked me to teach this Sunday, and I. Uh, I started thinking, oh, Lord, I want to teach about Job. (laughs) I don't know who says that, but I said it. (laughs) If any of you know the story of Job, that's probably why you're laughing. Um, He had horrible things happen to him. But when I started to read on that several weeks ago, I just totally was relating because every day we drive around and we see all the destruction in our community and it can be disheartening. And as you read the story of Job, everything's getting ripped away from him in his life. Anything that's good, one by one, one at a time. And it's like, can it get any worse? And I don't know about you, but over the past two months or so, I've had days like that. Have you? Have you had some days where you thought, I've been hit on three sides. I only got one side left. I'm trying to cover it back here, but it's rough. Come on, we've had some some rough days, and that's okay. But as I kept studying, and and I just totally, my heart was connecting with that story. Um, But the Lord would not let me go there. So I said, okay, well. Um, and there was something he had put on my heart probably about two weeks ago, and, and um, I was taking it for myself. Because you know, everything that the Lord tells you is not for somebody else. If you're mistakenly thinking that everything that you hear from the Lord, oh, who's that for, Lord? Is that for them? Oh, that's a word for them. Oh, that's a word for them. Oh, this is for you. The Lord told me this this morning, and you're the first person I've seen. That's not always how it goes. Maybe slow your roll. You need to kind of put the brakes on because the Lord wants to speak to you. And he had put this on my heart. And so I chewed on it and meditated on it for a while. And then he did encourage me to share it with some other people. But today, he wants me to share it with all of you today. So really, all I'm doing is I'm telling you what he's told me. And what he said, very clear, when I was up here and I was standing right over here in prayer, and he said, stay full. Stay full. Did you know that Jesus has already done everything he's going to do. And he is seated. He took a seat. What does it mean when you take a seat? You finished. You're done. He even said, it is finished. Jesus has already done everything he's going to do. And now he's in a seated, rested position. And he has all authority. And he's given all authority to you. So the Lord says, you already have everything you need. What are you going to do with it? It's up to you to stay full for you. So for me, I thought, okay, I can't. There are times and seasons of our life where we can ride the coattails of those who are spiritually more full, more mature than us, and we can get through some things. Yes, that's absolutely true. But there are seasons where he's going to require us and you have grown to a level where he is expecting you to be able to step off the coattail and try to find your bearings and find your balance in the middle of the storm. He's not always waiting and he doesn't want you to always wait for the wind to stop to then step out in faith and and find your bearings. I want to challenge you If you're in the boat and he's beckoning you, come on out, take a step, do it. Just do it. Come on. He already controls the wind and the waves. They obey his voice. They obey his name. And he's given you that name and he's given you that authority. So it's up to us to stay full. So one simple question. (laughs) What are you full of? Who laughed? I heard you. (laughs) I heard you. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, what, What are you full of? What have you been taking time to fill up on?
This is not a feel bad message. This is a stop and take notice and let me figure out how to get my balance in the middle of all of what's going on. What are you full of? It's possible for us to be filled. We are actually, I heard it explained this time, this way one time, that we're containers and we're made to carry something. Just like I have a container right here. And I can put anything in there. What are some things we can put in there? Gumballs. Yes, Lord. M&Ms. One time I had one of these type of things and I filled it full with M&Ms. So colorful, so pretty. And I used that to encourage my child to potty train. I said, whenever you use the potty, you, you get one. And he could see it. And he connected with that. So if this is you and if this is me, what have we been filling up on? And, and we fill up on things by, with our eyeballs. What are we watching? What are we giving our attention to? We fill up on things by what are we listening to? What are we taking in our eye gate and our ear gate? You may have heard those terms before. Because all of the stuff that we take in, the things we set our attention on and our affection on, the things that consume our time and consume our thoughts. Come on, have any of you been up in the middle of the night and you're trying to go to bed, but all of the decisions that you have to make are just going like this, buffering. Isn't that right? It's just, just the wheel is going like this because your mental capacity is full of all of this other stuff. Romans talks about being filled with joy and peace. It also talks about being filled with God's love. You can be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Philippians says that. Ephesians says filled with all the fullness of God. Stephen was full of God's grace and power. That's in Acts. You can be filled with faith. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's look at that. Let's look in Acts. Y'all okay to look at the Bible today? I just want you to know it's not me. It's not my word. This is from him. It's his word. I'm just going to walk you through what he showed me. What's going on up here? All right, let's look at Acts 2. This is after Jesus has already risen. The disciples are all met together in one place. And it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. And then it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. It's an amazing story. Amazing things are happening here. And they're getting full. They're getting filled with something. With what? With the Holy Spirit. And if you keep looking down through chapter 2, it talks about Peter. Peter got so full of the Holy Spirit that he steps up in front of a large crowd of people. And I love how in chapter 2, verse 37, it says that Peter's words pierced their hearts. See, Peter got to a place where he was so full of the Holy Spirit that when he spoke, his words that came out of his mouth were containers carrying what people needed and it entered into their heart. It pierced through the hard heart. It pierced through the frustration. It pierced through the worry and through the fear and through the confusion. Come on, I don't know about you, but when I speak, there's times when I want my words to have weight and for people to hear what I'm saying. I don't want to just talk to talk to fill up. There's enough of that. Come on. Social media is so full of people just trying to talk to talk. I have to, I have to distance myself from it because it's, it's taking up part of my mental capacity that I need to reserve for the Lord because the other stuff is just distracting me. So if you read down further, it says that 3,000 in all were added to the church that day. 3,000 people received Jesus as their Lord and Savior that day because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the same man that denied Jesus. 
He had a, a, a lot of issues. One his best day when he denied Jesus. But look at what happens. And when you read through Acts about Peter, what happens once he was filled with the Spirit? Those, the Greek words there where it says he pierced their hearts, it means it was pierced all the way down, deeply through, emotionally pierced. Come on, when you get full of the Holy Spirit and you go to speak to someone and their emotions are all out of control, it will help bring everything back into order. Come on, have you ever had a child that is acting unruly? It's like, when I speak to you, I want you to hear me because my words are trying to carry what you need, instruction and direction. Come on, that's the heart of the Father. And he wants you to be able to have that relationship with your kids. When I'm sitting at the nursing home with my dad and I can see that he's in his last days and I'm trying to talk to him about heaven and hell, I want those words to weigh something. I want those words to mean something. This is not a light conversation. This is very important. Probably the most important conversation we've ever had. I want those words to pierce his heart. And they did, thank God. But you gotta be full of the Holy Spirit. That's a key thing here. It says uh, psychologically pricked. It pierced their hearts. They were psychologically pricked. Emotionally stunned. Come on, because he was filled with the Spirit, it affected them emotionally. They noticed something changed. If you, if you keep going down into Acts chapter 3, around verse 6, Peter speaks to the man at the, ba- at the gate called Beautiful. Verse 4 says, Peter and John looked at him intently. And Peter said, look at me. And the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money because he was saying, hey, I need, I have needs, I have needs. But Peter said, I don't have any of that stuff you think you need, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. It says, then Peter took him by the hand and helped him up. And instantly he was healed and strengthened. Come on, look at the power that's released, this man that is filled with the Holy Spirit. He's helping somebody else. How many of you have somebody in your life that you want to help? I want to help them, I just don't know how. I want to help them, but I don't think I got what they need. God does. If you get full of him, you'll be able to bring that help and be that support. And then if you keep going down into chapter 4, Peter, there starts to come a commotion in the city and and the local government starts to get frustrated with him and they're not sure, they don't like what he's doing and they're complaining and it's disrupting business and it's causing people not to listen to these people who are in authority in local government right now. So they call them in. He's, He's speaking to powerful people that are in positions of leadership. It says... In chapter 4, they're called before the council. Verse 8 says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders, why are we being questioned here today? Because we've done a good deed for a crippled man. Do you want to know how he is healed? Let me tell you. It wasn't me. It was Jesus. Come on, if you want to go before important people and you want your words to have boldness, and you want your words to pierce their hearts, to do something for the kingdom of God, to go before your boss, to go before someone else who's an authority over you. When you are filled with the Spirit, He will give you the words to say at the right time that will be the most effective and most influential for the kingdom of God. Man, I want that. Come on, the boldness, the, word, the Greek word for boldness there says freedom. Freedom, openness, especially in speech. Have any of you ever had trouble speaking in front of people? You have to give a report for school. And it's like, uh, uh, I got my papers. Uh. Turn to page 46. Listen, I've been there. But you get full of the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the boldness, especially in your speech. That's what this Greek word, especially in your speech. It says leaving a witness that something, uh, that something deserves to be remembered or taken seriously. Come on, leave a mark. You want your words to leave a mark when you talk to people. And not a mark to scar them or to hurt them, but a mark for Jesus, a mark to encourage them, a mark that brings hope, that brings truth, that brings the power of God into their life. 
then change. Come on, this happened not because Peter was so cool, but because he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Stephen, if you keep going into Acts 6, Stephen was put into a leadership position simply because he was seen as being full of the Spirit and wisdom. It says they they called everybody together, called a meeting of believers together. And it says we're going to elect or choose seven men that are well-respected, full of the spirit and wisdom. So when you're full of the spirit, it must be recognizable. Something is different about you and about me when we are living full of him. It's noticeable. There is a change. And we know about the story about Stephen uh, it talks about how he performed great miracles, if you keep reading, and he gets arrested. And then in chapter 7, man, if you've never read it, Stephen lays down this phenomenal message. It's so long. It's so good. But he, like, recounts the whole history of his people. And he's like, you want to know? I'm going to tell you. How did he do that? Because he was full of something real. He was full of something eternal. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 7, when you keep going down to the end, man, it's hard, but it's hard. Let's just put it at that. Verse 55, they start stoning him. They get mad at him. It says, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven, and he saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing at the place of honor at God's right hand. There's only two times where Jesus is seen to be standing. What was he doing? I think he's standing up. Good job, Stephen. I'm for you. Good job, Stephen. I got your back. He gets up from his seated position to applaud Stephen and cheer him on. Don't quit. Don't quit. I know the stones hurt. I've been there, man. Look at my scars. And verse 59 says, as they stoned Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. Come on, this is like a super mercy, a super mercy. People are attacking him, are physically beating him to the point of death. And his response is, God, forgive him. I don't know about you, but I can tell you, you must be full of the Holy Spirit to have that response. That's amazing. Are there people in your life that have wounded you and hurt you and your response has turned to bitterness, which is only going to hurt you when you think it's distancing them and hurting them, but really it's just crippling you? Come on, we got to get full of the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, so that our response is, God, have mercy. They don't know what they're doing. God, have mercy. They're confused. God, have mercy. They need you. God, have mercy. They can't see clearly. If you keep going in Acts chapter 9, you see Ananias. I love this. I love this. This is so interesting to me. And this is talking about when Saul turns into Paul. You know, he's converted, knocked off his horse and stuff. But in verse 10, it says, nine, chapter 9, verse 10. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord spoke to him in a vision. So the Lord just like, I'm not getting a prophet. I'm not getting a teacher. I got I to gotta talk to you. Hold up, wait a minute. I'm going to give you a vision, give you a dream. I'm going to speak directly to you. I have to believe that part of it is because he's full of the Holy Spirit, which is going to go on to talk about that here. And he says, uh, the Lord says, Ananias. And he responded, yes, Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to go over there. You're going to meet a man, and I need you to lay your hands on him so that he can see again. Verse 13, his response is, but Lord. They're having a conversation here. Remember, this is a man who's full of the Holy Spirit, but he's a little unsure for a moment. That's okay. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard people talk about the terrible things this guy's done. He's crazy. He helped kill Stephen. But the Lord says, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take the message to the Gentiles. Verse 17 says, so Ananias went. Come on, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, the Lord wants to talk to you. And if there's things he's asking you to do and you're like, but Lord, 
hang on a second. You know what? He's going to be gentle with you, and that's okay. He'll give you some confirmation or some reaffirmation to affirm. You're saying, no, 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 this is, this is what we're supposed to do. Keep going. So Ananias went. If you keep going, he laid, went and laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road, the Lord who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So here we have Ananias who's full of the Holy Spirit visiting with another guy who gets full of the Holy Spirit. You carry this where you go. When you get full, it comes out of you and flows to people who are around you. So then, of course, Saul turns into Paul. And if you look in chapter 9... You keep reading down there, and, and um, I love that Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, it says in verse 22, and then down to verse 32, it talks about how Peter heals, uh, heals a guy who's paralyzed, and then he raises Dorcas from the dead. Come on, this is a man who's full of the Holy Spirit. He helps a guy who can't help himself. Have you ever wanted to help one of your relatives who can't help themselves? Have you ever wanted to help your child who can't help themselves, but you don't know how to do it? Come on, you get full of the Holy Spirit and he'll help you. Acts chapter 13, we're just taking a little trip. Taking a little trip. Acts chapter 13. Oh, yeah, you got Barnabas and Paul, Saul, who's now Paul here. Man, they got some stuff going on. And it says in verse 9, Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he looked the sorcerer in the eye because they've come before the governor. They've come into this town. And yet the governor's ear, he has a sorcerer who is whispering in his ear, trying to get him make wrong decisions for that community at that time. And Barnabas and Paul are bringing truth about Jesus. And the sorcerer is whispering, say, don't listen. They're lying. They're not telling you the truth. But here Paul is able to turn right to that man and and put him in his place. Silence the enemy. Silence that voice that is trying to rise up against him. How did he do it? Because he was full of something that gave him boldness to be able to do something about it. Listen, it takes effort to stay full. I love at the end of chapter 13, because it talks about how um, it says that the Jews were stirred up and the influential religious women and the leaders in the city, they incited a mob against Barnabas and Paul and it ran them out of town. They had so much going on. People got mad because they were messing with uh, people's income. They were changing the way business was being run. People weren't starting to where they didn't want to listen to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They're starting to see truth from untruth. And it's starting to make some people mad. You get full of the Holy Spirit and some people, they, it, it may rub them the wrong way. But that's okay. We're not trying to rub people the wrong way. We want to serve God. We want to help people. But I love here it says, so they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection. They went to the next town. It says, and the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Come on, you and I have experienced some things in our life where we're at a point where we need to shake the dust off of our feet and move on. If you are in a point in your life where you just can't get up and you're sitting, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so you can stand up and say, I got to shake this dust off my feet because I got things I got to do. I got people I got to talk to. God's got a mission and a project for me to accomplish. I don't exactly know what it is yet, but I got to get moving and I got to do something. Come on, it is time for us to get up and shake the dust off our feet. But there are some things that will knock you down so hard and try and throw dust all over you that it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit being full of him that will help you shake and release all of that off of your life. Separate that from your life. A clear separation so I can go forward with God. Come on, I need that. I need that. Come on, I'm going to give you a, a little visual aid here. Let me see that table back up here real quick. Because I I want you to see what I'm trying to say. How many of you like object lessons? 
You like pictures in your books. Anybody? Me? I like pictures. I want to see what it really looks like, you know. Can we put it on the stage? I'll move that one. Okay, so I've got here, remember the container. Let's go back to the container. And I'm going to need some help. Anyone? i got some good helpers. All right, grab that vase for me. We're going to put it in that one. And Everett, come sit right up here. Tucker, come sit right up here. I may need your help. I'll just leave this. All right, hold this, sir. And I'm going to need that big jar over there. Okay, so we have this right here. And this represents you and me. Let me just put it right here. Thank you. This uh, empty one represents you and me. And now in this, what do we have in here, sir? Uh, ping pong balls. A bunch of ping Okay, can you shake that for me really good? Okay, to me, it was funny. I put them in here because this reminded me sometimes, have you ever had this is what's going on in your head? All the thoughts, all the decisions you've got to make for the day. That's what that reminded me of. Okay, so what are some things that you've got, um, things that, that take up your time? Okay, give me, put some of those in here. Video games. What are some other things? I need more than that because we have a lot of people in here who video games probably fills up some of their time. What are some more things that, that we get full of? The what? Social media. Oh, yeah, we need some more in there. Put some. Oh, good. And some of the orange ones, that's like a whole bunch. That's like triple, triple points on those. What else? What are some things we get? Work. All right, put some in there. Work. Lots of decisions to make it. We need a few more. Yeah, yeah, work. We got a lot of people in here working. What else? What are some things? Kids. Relationships. How do I deal with these people in my life? I don't know what to do. What else? Insurance, Insurance companies and adjusters. God bless them. Hallelujah. I got to pick out shingles. They only gave me this much money. What am I going to do? These don't even match my house. Put some more in there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you and I, we get filled up of all these decisions. And, and can you see through that? No. No, it's, it's pretty. You can't see your brother through there, can you? No. Not at all. All you can see is ping. So it's pretty clouded. There's no clarity there. Can't see. Okay. But when you and I begin to take time every day to get filled up with the Holy Spirit by spending time with him, we, we, we're going to do it right here also. We're going to do that today so you can see what that looks like. But when you take time to read your Bible, to listen to praise and worship, to just get like scriptures come up out of your heart, out of your mouth, speak the word of God, just have a conversation with God, tell him how awesome he is. This is what happens. He's the water. This, the water is him. But sometimes we stop right here. We come to church, and we have a really good service, or we have a really good prayer meeting, and we spend good time. We got a great Devo on Thursday morning. Pump me up. I'm feeling good. Man, it lifted some weight. It brought a little bit of clarity at the bottom. But we're still trying to carry all of this other stuff, and we're letting all of these other things take up precious mental capacity up here in our soul and also in our heart, just being full of these things that we really were not made to carry, right? What we need to do is fill it all the way up. So what we need to do is fill it all the way up. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. We need to fill it all the way up because now, can you see your brother through that? Yep. You can see. Yep. Come on, there's clarity in your thoughts. There's clarity in your speech. All these things that we've been trying, and it's not that they don't exist, but now you've laid them down at his feet. You've let go. You've relinquished authority and control. That's not me, Lord. I'm bringing it to you. It's all about you. Show me what to do with this one, okay? Show me what to do with this one. Okay, great. And you'll still have days where things will come. You'll still have days. Oh, let's get some triples in there because you got lots of, uh, tomorrow's Monday. Guys, 
triples. They got some triples on there Monday, but they're not going to get in. They're not going to weigh you down because you're already full of something else. And if you and I can be diligent to Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, make an effort to fill back up because we do leak. It'll get depleted. Come on, by tomorrow, if you get full today, by tomorrow it's going to go down a little. But in the morning, you get up and do your Bible reading, and you may not feel good, but you say, God, I'm giving it to you anyway. I don't care how I feel. I know you're good. And it fills you right back up. And we stay full. The, the problem sometimes happens this way. Is it sometimes we come to church and, and we just don't do an F, we don't make an effort to uh, do it throughout the week so that when you come and you gather together with other people, you're already over half empty. Listen, you were made to do this. You don't need keys, Allie on the keys, but she's awesome. You don't need Marlisa on the guitar, Jones, but she's awesome. The Edson singing and playing. But it helps. And we do need times like that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. We need times like that. But you are made to be able to fill up on your own wherever you are. When you stop and you acknowledge him, say, God, I need you. God, this is who you are to me. God, I love you. God, I need you. And I encourage you, even if you don't feel like anything's happening, if you're making an effort to get full, you are giving God something to work with, and he can move with that. So don't let your feelings lie to you. So we're going to take just a moment. I'm going to ask the band, actually, to come back up here.